Hey, it's Michael from Aerial Influence. We're showing you something a little bit new. This is actually a VR 180 3D video that we're doing. So it's best seen on an Oculus or some type of uh, head mount display like that. Um, but you can obviously go you know, cheaper. You can actually see it on, on a computer and on your phone and all that kind of stuff, but you're going to be scrolling around. So the best uh, way to view it is obviously through an Oculus type headset. But anyways, we're gonna look at the T16, just kind of basic stuff, you know, stuff that you've probably already seen, but you might not have seen it in VR 180 3D. <laughs> so we're in the back of the T16. You've got your nifty little remote holder. Uh, you also have access to the big battery. So I'm gonna get this battery and kind of... It's a hell of a battery too. This is a big battery. This is about a close to 15 pounds, I think. Um, yeah, actually we weighed this thing and without the tank here, um, the dry weight with the battery is just under 55 pounds. So you can get this and not spray your fields and just fly around the fields. But if you actually want to fly this thing legally and spray with it, you're going to have to kind of go for a 137 exemption, which is, um, it also you're going to want 55 pounds and over. We get into that. That's a... That's a, that's a whole different uh, thing. We're and just kind of showing some... And all stuff they can contact us about. Obviously, exactly. we can talk yeah. to them about it, yeah. Anytime. Um, so this is the tank. I'm going to take this thing out, get it real close. <laughs> Show you the filter that comes in it. And the idea with this is that if you're, if you're going to buy one of these uh, spraying drones, you're going to want to get several of these tanks so that as the drone flies back, as it you know finishes, runs out of pesticide, runs out of battery, you've got fresh battery, fresh tank, ready to just load right, right. in, and that's why it's so convenient with that that top mounting or top loading system. So. Right. Yeah, and at least at least two for like the same pesticide you're going to use. I mean, if you're going to then use, you know, pesticide and herbicide or something like that, you might want to get multiple tanks and and two of them, uh, you know, each time because when the drone flies back you can swap it out with a full tank and then while it's flying out you can fill the the first tank up and have it ready to go um, so we'll kind of go this way a little bit we've got the props big big props big pancake motors here um, these obviously fold in they also unfold the interesting thing too is that these you know on the on the octocopter, they would rotate clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, but these, they're actually, some of them rotate in the same direction, like uh, the two far arms are both counterclockwise. And then if you also kind of look at the angle here, these arms are actually lower than these. Um, so I think all this was kind of put into place and changed the the design of it one for obviously getting this load up in the air and um stabilizing it but also you've got the drift from whatever you're spraying and i believe that the the way that the propellers turn and the alignment of the whole uh, arms and, and uh, propellers are, are kind of helping to minimize that drift and if David pans down here, this is the obstacle, obstacle avoidance radar. So this thing's gonna spin at about 15 revolutions per second, I believe. And that's what's allowing you to basically, obviously it's obstacle avoidance, but it's also, it's, it's, uh, it's going along with the terrain. So if, if your crop is on a hillside, the drone is going to sense that the the uh, yeah it's going to go. the ground is higher and it's going to go with the ground where if it didn't have that that radar it could potentially just run right into the side of a hill right yeah so it, it works for yeah stabilization obstacle avoidance and 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 also just uh, terrain awareness as well uh, then the, the, up here you've got actually the RTK module so now these drones are basically being equipped with RTK right from the get-go, so you're not buying a non-RTK versus an RTK. Although, in order to utilize this to its fullest, you're gonna want an RTK base station, or at least um, 
an RTK signal that is being broadcast near your property or where you're using it uh, that you can then tap into and that can actually be programmed into the remote. Uh, and so we're at the front here, signified by this nice orange mask. You got four individual pumps that are going to the eight nozzles. So four pumps, eight nozzles. Right here, you've got an FPV camera. So you can see the live view on the sides. It's for lights. That's another uh, conversation altogether too, because if you're going to do night flying, that's going to be something you're going to have to uh, obviously get a waiver exemption for if you're doing night spraying. But I, I think I think it's just a matter of time until we're there. Yeah, and all stuff that we can assist with, you know. Right. Um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I mean, this is just a broad overview. We wanted to kind of see what this thing looked like, you know, in VR uh, 180 3D. And we uh, want to see at some point if this if VR, you know, could potentially be a good training tool for us. Training, you know, yeah. The idea would be that people around the country, if they've got the VR headset, we can kind of go in, whether it's teaching them how to repair the drone, um, just teaching them some of the, the functionality of the drone itself, VR might be a, a good option for us, but that's what we're figuring out. That's what everybody's yeah. figuring out right exactly. now, Exactly. Right? Yeah, in the age of COVID and when people are limited to go places, this might be exactly what, uh, you know. What we need. What we need. It does, yeah. and it does go, it does, uh, you know, yeah. you don't have to put the whole thing down, but it, it does collapse down into a pretty, pretty nice little package. I mean, it. it, it yeah, the side arms kind of collapse into each other. The, the front and back arms fold down. So you can see that it can get pretty, pretty compact. Yeah. So you could get and, and not two or three of these, two, two, to, two to four, in, in, depending on what kind of truck bed you've got, but yeah. easily. And again, you know, we don't, we don't necessarily think these agricultural drones, while they are drones that we sell, we don't think that they are going to replace crop dusters or anything. We do see them as a tool that crop dusters probably should be looking into, probably should be using in some capacity. They might be able to, to uh, actually, you know, hit a, a patch of, of field that they weren't able to hit in the past. They could, you yeah. know, there, there are many things that, that a crop duster, they would actually be the ideal person. Yeah. Right? I mean, exactly. the yeah. ideal I mean, person to, to use one of these drones as an addition to the services they already offer, right. you know? Yeah, because so. there's, there's going to be times where it's not going to make sense for a farmer or somebody to, to incorporate somebody that's got um, an air tractor, you know, a, a big spraying airplane uh, to come over and spray, uh, whether, whether they have a lot of land or not. I mean, if, if the land is parceled, you know, it's going to be really hard for a big plane mm -hmm. to get in there and swoop in to do each, each one. So this definitely has its place and, uh, somewhere down the line, I mean, they can, you can hook up five to one, dr to five drones to one remote. Um, Again, that's going to be something else that you have to go through as far as the exemption waivers, waivers and everything. But it, it is something that now all of a sudden you've got maybe a 40 pound payload and then you can multiply that by five. Right. So now you've got 200 pounds of, you know, five drones going out. So now instead yeah. of with a T-16, they say, what, 20 acres an hour? Mm -hmm. So... You got five of those, you got 100 acres an hour. Well, the T20, which is coming soon or is, you know, starting yeah. to trickle its way in, uh, you get five of those lined up, you're suddenly covering a lot of ground. Right, yeah, they're just going Completely unmanned, yeah, so. Yeah, so there you have it. All right. The T16 in VR 180 3D. So for the two people that see it, thank you. <laughs> Comment below, <laughs> like, hit the like button and everything. Smash it, smash the like smash button. Smash it. Uh, we appreciate it. Thank you guys here. I'll turn around real fast. I don't know what the, this is going to look horrible. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, let us yeah, know if it's going to be blinding lights. Let in the us face. know if any of this is interesting to you whatsoever in terms of the different style of shooting. Because yeah. uh, we'll do more of it if it is. So, all right. Thanks. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.